So I just wanted to uh, show off this one system I've been working on. It's for controlling uh, multiple turtles while even offline from the server, basically. Um, so here's, here's basically how I just set it up. Um, so I just downloaded all the dependencies off the server. It uses my item control API, my navigation control API, and this uh, new agent script that I wrote. So first off, I load the API agent.lua, and then uh, <clears throat> I do agent.setid, and I'll just tell this one to take the ID of like test one. Then I just start the agent. Let's reboot it. Now the agent's running. So put all our items in here. And then let's run the actual uh, controller. So this is a controller I've been writing that's uh, entirely in uh, Godot. Uh, I used Godot because, well, I don't know, it's pretty simple. Uh, way better than 3JS one, that's for sure. So we put in test one here, hit connect. And now uh, I have a Lua executor here, which is really simple. Do like turn it off forward. If I move this out of the way so you can see it, hit execute on here. <laughs> and of course it doesn't work because I forgot to put the fuel in. Let's just manually do that, save time. Alright, let's try that again. There it goes. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's one of the most basic functions. But uh, have a look at what I made here. So here's our dedicated uh, controller. If I press this request data button here, watch what happens. We get a real-time 3D map of the area. And uh, you can actually right-click blocks, and down here in this section, it'll show you what it is. Some textures aren't assigned due to how I'm grabbing them. And you'll see some, uh, some weird discrepancies with the uh, coloring too, especially with like grass and other natural blocks. But yeah, uh, apart from that, you can actually press uh, 1 and 2, and well, if we see that here. So 1 and 2 will actually go down levels of the world. So that'll take off from the top. It's really laggy, I'm still optimizing this. Um, and then 3 and 4 will actually let you see below. So you can see all sorts of stuff from the area. Uh, you got your WASD movement keys. I would not recommend using them, per se, here. Oh, it looks like they're broken too now. Now let's see what's going on with that. Eh, I'm not sure. However, that's not the primary method of control anyways. Uh, I find the best way to do it is kind of hard to see down here, but there's this auto-scan button. And hit that, and uh, this box over here is actually a small Lua executor. So we can do something like uh, turtle.forward, hit execute on that, and you can see it executing here. So we can even do like, uh, and then we can execute the loop here. All works as expected. Um, however, so, for the, the turtle actually keeps its uh, location here. You can see that's actually incorrect right now. Um, so let's fix that. So since this uses my navigation control API, uh, it needs to be facing north. So you can see north is on the positive or on the negative Z axis. Uh, so we just need to ensure the turtle's facing north. And then to do the manual calibration, load, oops. Oh, it looks like it's already loaded. Let's do it anyways. So, to uh, calibrate its position here, uh, you can see in the F3 menu that targeted block section to the right. Uh, let's just search something random there to get that out of the way. Uh, I found calibrate, and then we just put in those boards. 95. There we go. So now, 
without GPS, we can actually navigate silently. So this can stay silent from uh, anyone who might be listening in on those modem channels. And now you can see our position is updated. Uh, you can see our fuel level down here. And yeah. Eventually I want to I want to make it actually use a world mesh so you can save more than the 8x8 area around you. It can do more, but it just stresses things out a lot and it's not really worth it. Because scanning more than 8x8 also takes fuel from the geoscanner. But yeah, that's about it.